In this video, we're going to talk about the assignment operator and mathematical expressions. Basically, these are the two key concepts you need to understand in order to use MATLAB command window interface like a calculator. So our objectives here are first to understand how the assignment operator in MATLAB is different from the equal sign in math. And they are indeed different, and the difference is very important. We want to understand that a MATLAB variable represents a memory location in the computer. We also want to understand rules and best practices for naming variables and how to input mathematical expressions into MATLAB. Let's start by talking about scalar calculations. So we can use the command window like a calculator. For example, here we just entered 3 times 7 plus 10 and the answer is 31. You'll notice the output shows this ANS. That's actually a generic answer variable that MATLAB creates when we don't use a variable on the left side, when we don't assign the output of a MATLAB command to a variable. We'll talk more about what that means in a minute. But So ANS would show up in the workspace as we talked about in the previous video. So let's talk more about assignment. I use that term, we want to assign the result of the command to a variable. So the assignment operator is the equal sign. So when we're talking about the assignment operator, we're talking about the equal sign. In general, we want, we want to assign the results of all our calculations in MATLAB to variables so we can work more with them. So here's a simple example where we've taken that previous calculation, assigned the result to A, a variable A, and then we've used A again here in the subsequent calculation to calculate B. And we've assigned that result to B. When we assign a single number to a variable, we call that variable a scalar because the variable represents a single number. A little bit later in the quarter, we'll talk about arrays um, where we can assign multiple numbers to the same variable. But that concept's a little bit more complicated, and we're going to save that for a couple weeks down the road. So right now, we're just working with scalar variables where a single number is assigned to a letter or a word. So let's talk a little bit about how is assignment different from mathematical equality. So in algebra, we could write the equation x equals 3 plus 5. And we take that to mean that x equals 8. And it means that both sides are the same. So x equals 8 and 3 plus 5 equals 8. In computer programming, or MATLAB, which is an example of computer programming, when we say x equals 3 plus 5, the correct way to read that is that we are telling the machine to store the value on the right hand side of the equation in a memory location and to name that location x. So in other words, calculate 3 plus 5 and store that result in a memory location that we are going to call x. So let's talk more about that. Is that really different? Yes, it's very different and it's very important to really understand this difference. So let's consider the expression x equals x plus 1. So in math, this expression reduces to 0 equals 1. And that's impossible. So it's not even a valid mathematical expression. In computer programming, This is a common expression, and it's valid. What we're saying here is take the current value of x, add 1 to it, and assign that to, a new to the same variable x. So let's suppose we're at a, coming to a command, and the current value of x in a workspace is x equals 5. And then when we say, we've got that, and then our next command would be 
say x equals x plus 1. Well, what will happen here is we will plug in the 5, the computer will plug in the 5 there, and the output here will be x equals 6. And that is also now the new value of x in the workspace. So this is a critical difference here. So what's happening with assignment, just to review again, is we are going to take the results of the calculation on the right hand side and put that into a variable on the left hand side. So one key uh, consequence of this is we couldn't write something like this as a MATLAB command. X plus 1 equals X. Well, this is illegal. If you tried this in MATLAB, what you would get is an error that says something like invalid target for an assignment. In other words, this value, x plus 1, on the left-hand side isn't a single variable. For now, when we're working with scalars, you just always want to make sure that the, on the left-hand side of the equal sign is a single variable, and you can think of that as the target of your assignment for whatever mathematical expression is on the right hand side of the equal sign or the equal sign we'll call the assignment operator. Let's talk a little bit more about variables. It's helpful to know a little bit about what is the computer actually doing when we type these commands. So let's look at a typical command like we were doing right there x equals x plus 1. So what the computer is going to do is it's going to calculate this and then it's going to assign to the variable x. Well that variable name x can be thought of as an address for a memory location in the computer's RAM. RAM if you're not familiar with that refers to random access memory. All softwares working with variables like this even when it's not mathematical software and the amount of RAM a computer has available is that gives a pretty good indication of its performance. If you ever bought a computer, which I imagine most of you have shopped for computers, you will know um, that the RAM is a pretty critical performance characteristic of a computer. So let's talk a little bit more about computer memory. So how is this information stored in that memory location? Well, the information is coded as a series of ones and zeros and that we call bits. So each bit can either be a 1 or a 0. Now MATLAB's working with numbers and it's stored in what's called 64-bit double precision format. So what does that mean? Well here's some consequences. So 64 bits means we are using 64 switches that can be 1 or 0 to store the number. The consequences of that we're not going to get into binary arithmetic here, but the consequences of that are that the smallest real number that you can have in MATLAB is 2.2231 times 10 to the minus 308. Pretty small number. The largest real number is 1.7977 times 10 to the 308. And these are actually stored in MATLAB variables, special variables called real min and real max. The precision is 2.2204 times 10 to the minus 16. The precision means we have some, some error here that can be introduced because sometimes uh, we can't use those ones and zeros to get an exact representation of the decimal number. And a perfect example to see this, if you go open up MATLAB and type in the sine of pi. So pi is a built-in number in MATLAB. So it knows pi. And the sine of pi should be 0, but when you type that in, you'll notice you get some number times 10 to the minus 16. And that's because pi is an irrational number, so it doesn't really end in terms of decimals. And when we calculate the sine of pi, the computer has to put an end to pi, and it's actually an approximation. But 10 to the minus 16 is pretty small, pretty close to zero, so it's usually not a practical consequence. So, 
when you define the scalar variable, you are doing two things. You're reserving 64 bits, which is 8 bytes of the computer's RAM to store that number. That's relevant to say you have 2 gigabytes of RAM. You're making a very small dent in that RAM when you define a variable. And then you're giving that storage location a name. Before we move on, I want to make a note on the number display. So here's some example MATLAB output, and you'll notice the default, as was the previous example, is four decimal places. Um, that doesn't mean that there's not more precision stored in the computer memory. This is just display precision or format. If you want to see all of the numbers, you can type format long and if we type in the same command here we see all of the numbers that are scored stored we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 digits here and that's our precision down to 10 to the minus 16 so here's that 10 to the minus 16 space there so Generally, it's okay to work with the short format. This is the short format. We'll generally work with the short format, but you just want to be aware that MATLAB is really carrying along a lot more information about those numbers. So this, this, when you're working in short format, all of this is hidden, but it's still stored in the variable. Let's talk a little bit more about variable naming. MATLAB allows up to 63 characters in a variable name and it has the following rules. All names must start with a letter. That rule is there so that when MATLAB sees that variable name, it doesn't think it's part of some numeric calculation. So they must start with a letter. They may contain letters, numbers, and the underscore. So you can't have a space, but if you wanted to put a space in the name, you can use for space in the variable name. The names are case sensitive. So the variables radius with a capital R and radius with a lowercase r would, be, would point to two different memory locations. So this is something to keep in mind as you're working with MATLAB. It's a common mistake to not be consistent with capitalization. There's also certain keywords you can't use. Um, if you type is keyword at the command prompt, you'll get a list. Some of those are for and if and while, and these are actually MATLAB commands, parts of programming structures that we'll be learning about later in the course. And there's a big long list if you type is keyword. Some best practices for variable names. You want to use descriptive names as much as possible. This makes your problem solving easier to follow. For example, if you are having a problem with it and bring it to me and want me to help you figure it out, if you're using descriptive variable names, It'll be easier for me to get up to speed on what you're doing. Also easier for your fellow classmates. Mates. And also make sure code, once we start writing computer code, computer programs, much easier to debug. And we'll start writing computer programs, short ones, next week. When you're working with variable names, now that you've written long descriptive variable names, it's best to use copy-paste when you're using variables that you've already created so you can avoid typos and changes in capitalization. Another key here is do not overwrite built-in functions. We'll talk more about built-in functions in a minute, but this can be a dangerous thing. So for example, if you type the command sine equals 3, or sin equals 3, um, that would create a variable called sin. And now, when working later with MATLAB, that variable overwrites the sine function that's built in. And what that would mean is if after that we entered a command like uh, x equals sine of pi, we would get an error. We would no longer have that sine function available to us because it's now going to think uh, sin is a variable and then this will be, it's, with a parenthesis here, there would be no operator in between sin and that parenthesis. So, that we're starting to get into mathematical expressions here, so let's talk a little bit more about that. So mathematical expressions in MATLAB. In other words, using MATLAB, 
as a calculator. First talk about order of operations. The order of operations in MATLAB is the same as you've learned in your math courses. Same as on your calculator. So it evaluates expressions in parentheses first. One key, always use parentheses. Brackets, square brackets and curly brackets have other special uses in MATLAB. So when you're doing your math homework, you might use brackets and curly braces to kind of organize nested parentheses. In MATLAB, it's always regular parentheses. Then exponentiation comes next. That's with the caret. Multiplication is an asterisk. Division is a forward slash. That's evaluated left to right. And addition and subtraction follow that, evaluated left to right. Spaces in mathematical mathematical expressions do not matter. There's also several built-in functions. Some of the common ones for doing basic math. Uh, MATLAB has all of the trig functions included. Sine, cosine, tangent, also secant, cosecant, etc. One key on these is the argument x it assumes is in radians. You can, it has a whole nother set of functions called, for example, sine d of x or cos d of x. In those cases, the number you put in for x is assumed to be in degrees. So be aware of that when you're using sine and cosine. If you're not getting the answers you expect, you might be getting confused between radians and degrees. There's also the inverse trig functions, a sine, a cosine, a tangent. And in these cases, again, the answer is going to be in radians. Be aware of that. The exponential function in MATLAB, e to the x, MATLAB does not have an e. There's no e built in. The way to calculate an exponential function is with exp x. So x would be the exponent, e to the x in that case. Logarithms. Natural log, ln, in MATLAB is log of x. Base 10 log is log 10 with x as the input argument. Also, absolute value is abs, and square root is sqrt. In all of these examples, I've just put x as the input. This would be the input argument it doesn't have to be x, it can be any variable you want as long as it refers to a number or it can be a mathematical expression. So we could have something like sine of 2 times pi plus 3 or something like that. And all of that would be an argument, it would calculate it, then go to the sine function. If you're looking for a function and the correct function name in MATLAB, you can use the function browser, which is Shift F1, and find the correct MATLAB name for that function. So in the next video, we'll do a short example to just get a sense of what it's like working in the MATLAB command window like a calculator.